Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Emmanuel on this day of Pentecost. And what a beautiful day the Lord has made. We welcome all who are in the sanctuary and those who are viewing us on Facebook. I have a couple of announcements. Um, our church has a bowling team, if you did not know that, and Joshua Bates uh, bowls on that team. And they have come in third place, and yes, they do still make trophies, and we got a third place trophy, and it is outside the office window if you would like to view it, and congratulations. Um, let me see, oh, there will, there will be a congregational um, meeting, annual meeting, in two weeks in the sanctuary right after church, and the elders are going to make sure that we have a little snack afterwards, so make sure you plan on coming to the meeting and then staying after for whatever goodies they are going to provide. And also, um, we would like for you to get your reports into the office as soon as possible so Dean can get them ready for the book. I think that's all I have, Mr. Wentworth. Was there anything else? Um, so let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it on this day of Pentecost. During this
<clears throat> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the A reading from Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, 
Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear that speaking about God deeds, God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord God will be saved. The word of the Lord. The psalm is from Psalm 104. We will read responsibly, whole verse by whole verse. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea. There move the ships, and there is that Leviathan, which you have made for the sport of it all. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You hide your face, and they are terrified. You take away their breath, and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created and so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have found thee. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. The second reading is from the 12th chapter of 1 Corinthians. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it's the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge, according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy, to another, the discernment of spirits, to another, various kinds of tongues, to another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the spirit chooses. For just as the body is one 
and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord.
celebrated there in John chapter 7 is not Pentecost, but rather the Autumn Festival, the Feast of Tabernacles. Whereas Pentecost, which came 50 days after Passover, Pentecost means 50th, and just as for us it comes 50 days after Easter, Pentecost was the festival of the first fruits of the harvest. Tabernacles was the feast of the final harvest when everything had been gathered in from the grain fields, the olive groves, and the vineyards. And during this seven-day festival, the people would live in huts or booths which they had constructed. If you are in a neighborhood where there are many Jewish people, uh, when that festival comes around in late September or early October, uh, you will see these uh, little house-like uh, constructions that they put in their yards or attach to their homes, and they actually live in those and sleep in those for a period of seven days. And that's what the Feast of Tabernacles was all about. It was to remind them of their Israelite ancestors had lived in such a way on their journey to freedom through the wilderness. Not only did they acknowledge God's goodness in the harvest, but that it was the Lord who supplied them with water, without which there would be no harvest. Each day during this festival, the priests of the temple would take a large golden bucket to the pool of Siloam, and they would fill it with water and would carry it back to the temple. And then there would be a blast of trumpets, and those words from Isaiah would be joyously sung, with joy shall you draw water from the wells of salvation. And then this water would be poured into a huge silver funnel and would flow down over the stone altar and down the steps to the ground below. And the people would clap their hands and shout for joy, praising God for the gift of water. And it is in the midst of this scene that St. John portrays for us Jesus standing up and crying out, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Thus Jesus identifies himself with those wells, those reservoirs of salvation, and speaks of a living water, a flowing water, which is identified with the Holy Spirit, which those who believe in him are to receive. Our Lord says, let anyone who is thirsty come. His invitation is not limited to a few selected persons. Any man, woman, or child who is thirsty is invited by Jesus to come to me and drink. There is no charge, no fee to be paid, all that is necessary is to have a need. The one who believes in me, says Jesus. We come to Jesus and, and we drink of that life-giving water when we put our trust in him. When we find in him the God we are looking for, a meaning to our lives, an answer to our need, forgiveness for our guilt, strength in our weakness, health in our sickness, life 
in the midst of death. When we are able to say of him, he is my water when I am thirsty, he is my bread when I am hungry, he is my joy in sorrow, my hope for tomorrow, my rock in a weary land, my shelter in a time of storm. When everything is coming apart, and there are times when we do feel that way, but he is the center that still holds. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink the one relieving in me from their inmost being shall flow rivers of living water. My siblings in Christ, when we have this Christ in our lives, we have a reservoir within us, a reservoir of living water. That water of the Spirit is not meant merely to be contained within us, because we become channels of living water, that it may flow out to others. The water of the Spirit is not a stagnant pool, but a mighty flowing river that bursts all artificial boundaries. One ancient Greek philosopher said everything flows. You never stand in the same river twice. And therefore, as disciples of our Lord, we, we, we must learn to go with the flow and be prepared for change. Not change for the sake of change, but change that is transformative in a life-giving way. And it does require discernment, not just of one person, but of the whole body together. We must be always learning to move with the current of God's Spirit. We are still learning to do this. The faith and life that we have is a faith and life to be shared. My sisters and brothers, there is a world that is parched and dying of thirst. Surely we see it around us almost every day. A world parched and dying of thirst, not just in some far off land, but right here at our own doorstep. May we issue the invitation. Whoever is thirsty, come to Jesus Christ and drink. And of course, we must find the right words for that in any given situation or to any particular person or persons, there are many different ways in which we can say and express that, that they may find in the community of Christ's followers those living waters flowing. The spirit of the one who even from the cross breathed out his spirit, and from whose wounded side water along with blood came pouring forth. And as the risen one breathed that spirit upon his disciples and dramatically on the whole church on the day of Pentecost, my sisters and brothers, may we know that we are his and he is ours today to the glory of the eternal trinity.
Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith by the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For the prayers, you may either stay standing, be seated, or kneel. In the power of the Spirit, let us pray to God the Father that through his dear Son, he would accomplish his will for the church, the world, and all people for whom we pray. Abba, Father, for Jesus' sake, in the power of the Holy Spirit, we may call you Father. Thank you for giving us the same Spirit that filled your beloved Son. Thank you for the gifts of that Spirit given so we may bless and praise you and proclaim your love to those who need it most. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Pour out your Spirit upon the church. Kindle in it the flame of truth, holiness, faithfulness, and goodness. Make it steadfast in suffering, faithful in witness, generous in service, and ardent in worship. Conform it to Christ, so that through your spirit, many are drawn to faith in him. Lord, in your mercy. When they were persecuted, the martyrs' joyful faith softened stony hearts. Do this also for your servants who still suffer on account of Christ. Sustain them with your life-giving spirit. Keep them steadfast, never returning evil for evil. Let their faithful suffering bear rich fruit, feeding even their tormentors with repentance and faith. Lord, in your mercy. Renew the hearts, minds, worship, and life of this congregation. Make us lovely and loving, joyful and kind, faithful and forgiving, generous and patient, humble and valiant. Make us look like Jesus and use us to draw others into his nearer presence. Lord, in your mercy. Through your spirit, you give the apostles words to proclaim your saving truth to pilgrims from many nations. We pray for translators, editors, commentators, authors, and narrators for speech therapists, for teachers, tutors, and theologians, and for all of us. Let us use words wisely and well. Give us a passion for speaking truth and love. By that same spirit, discipline our tongues to refrain from words that hurt our neighbor, from telling convenient lies, and from rhetoric that inflames base passions. And to those who cannot speak, impart your spirit, which searches the heart and intercedes before you with sighs too deep for words. Lord, in your mercy. Your Instruct the leaders of the nations in your ways, O Lord. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, counsel and might, knowledge and fear of you, their Lord. 
so that they and the people in their care may have joy in your presence. Teach all of us the things that make for peace and give us a spirit willing to them. Lord, in your mercy. On this Memorial Day weekend, we lovingly commend into your care all our beloved dead, especially those who gave your life in service of their country. Keep their memories fresh and bright. Spur us to deeds of faithfulness, generosity, and self-sacrifice. And hasten the day when war shall cease, evil is vanquished, every tear is wiped away, and you are truly all in all. Lord, in your mercy. Bring healing and hope also to everyone who has been afflicted by suffering and who needs the grace of your life-giving spirit, especially remember before you those we name aloud or in the silence of your heart. We pray especially for Darlene Valley, Christine Schweitzer, Jerry Toot, Harry Redmond, Billy Your spirit brings renewed life to all creation. Grant that renewal to your servants and to all who care for them. Lord, in your mercy. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for receiving our beloved dead into your arms. Thank you for the life, death, and resurrection of your dear Son, who has bestowed the spirit of life upon all who trust in him. Breathe that spirit into our lives and keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. Raise us up in the power of the Spirit and in union with our dear Savior, so that with the whole redeemed and renewed creation, we may forever adore and worship you, the Lord of heaven. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery. By the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up, and things which have grown old are being made new, and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made. Your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ, our risen Lord, be with you all. And also with you.
endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts, that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Send now, we pray, your holy 
Spirit, that we and all who share this bread and cup may be united in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, may enter the fullness of the kingdom of heaven, and may receive our inheritance with all your things in life. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place. With Mary, the Virgin Mother of our Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ, with prophets, apostles, evangelists, martyrs, and all the saints, and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. <laughs>
body and blood of our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Christ our risen Lord. 